Hey, let us talk about history again. This time about Cleopatra the Seventh. So, Cleopatra's story sounds simple, right? Well, Shakespeare says she is this stunning Egyptian queen who mastered seduction, hooked up with all the important guys in Rome, and ended up wrecking her empire before committing snake-assisted. Well, you know what? Easy, right? Well, obviously not. So, today we are diving into the history of the infamous queen Cleopatra the Seventh. But before we begin, don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button. Now, with that being said, let's get right into it. First off, don't trust questions like that. And second. Cleopatra's real story is way more complex and of course a lot more fascinating. One big issue is that her tale is often just a side note in Roman history, not even the main event. And, not helping matters, most of our sources of her come from Romans, with no problems painting her as a seductress who ruined the lives of innocent great men. But, as they say, it's history for you. So, let's dig into the real story of Cleopatra. Her story actually kicks off 300 years before she was even born. When Alexander the Great, basically the kid who wanted to own everything, marched east, beat the Persians, and conquered basically everything in sight. After he died, without a clear plan for who should take over, his generals scrambled to grab their pieces of the empire. One of them, Ptolemy, snagged Egypt, starting a royal dynasty that was, let's say, a bit messy. By the way, if you want to see me lose my mind trying to explain that family tree, let me know in the comments. But back to Cleopatra. Her ancestors ruled Egypt during the Hellenistic era, where Greek culture spread all the way to Syria, Mesopotamia, and, of course, Egypt. Even though this is Egypt we are talking about, the Ptolemies were Greek, culturally speaking. Fast forward three centuries, and there is Cleopatra, the seventh of her name, living in the incredible city of Alexandria with her younger brother, Ptolemy the Thirteenth. Alexandria was the intellectual capital of the Mediterranean. We're talking libraries, scientists, poets, you name it. Basically, the Wikipedia of ancient time. And Cleopatra? Well, she got the best education anyone could get in the Greek world. And unlike her hardy hard ancestors, Cleopatra actually put in the effort. She was raised on classics like Homer, Herodotus, Plato, and Aristotle. Not only did she know all the important stuff, but she was trained in how to think, argue, and speak in a bunch of different languages. And of course, as a linguist myself, whenever someone can speak multiple languages, I'm always impressed and encouraged to keep going. She wasn't just pretty, she was incredibly smart. And that's how she really won people over. Forget what you have heard about her looks. She wasn't famous for being gorgeous, but for being one heck of a conversationalist. When her dad, Ptolemy XII, died, she and her pre-teen brother became co-rulers. But, family drama being what it is, the two quickly started scheming against each other. What did you expect? After a couple of years, young Ptolemy XIII gathered enough political and military allies to kick Cleopatra out of Egypt while she was dealing with exile. A much bigger civil war was brewing. Julius Caesar was chasing his rival, Pompey, across the Mediterranean. Cleopatra thought she could win back her throne by siding with Pompey. But her brother 
had other plans. He had Pompey killed as soon as he arrived in Alexandria, thinking it would win Caesar over. Spoiler alert, Caesar wasn't impressed at all. Cleopatra saw an opportunity and knew she had to act fast. She couldn't just walk into the palace. She was an exile, right? So, she sneaked in, probably in a laundry bag, not a rug, as the legend goes, and made her pitch to Caesar. Shakespeare might say she seduced him on the spot, but it was more likely her wit and charm that caught his attention. Caesar realized she was a way better option than her brother, and Cleopatra needed Caesar's muscle to get back to her throne. So, a win-win situation. Caesar's gamble on Cleopatra wasn't just about romance, though they did eventually become lovers. Cleopatra was smart, resourceful, and a better ruler than her brother. So, Caesar backed her in the civil war that followed. Ptolemy's forces surrounded them in the palace, and for six months, Cleopatra and Caesar were trapped. They used the time to bond, both politically and personally, that is. By the time Caesar's reinforcements arrived, the couple had already grown close, and Cleopatra, well, was pregnant with Caesar's child. <laughs> What a surprise! After the siege was over, Cleopatra was firmly back on the throne, and spent the next several years stabilizing Egypt. She styled herself as Isis reincarnated, a powerful symbol for her people. She wasn't just a figurehead, though. She took Egypt's economy seriously, and managed the bureaucracy like a pro. With the Nile's unpredictable flooding, she had no choice but to stay on top of things. Her reign was marked by smart, hands-on leadership, something her ancestors. Really didn't care about. Cleopatra didn't just care about ruling; she was also all about her people. She made sure corruption was kept in check, took care of both Greeks and Egyptians, a first for a dynasty, by the way, and actually bothered to learn Egyptian, unlike her predecessors. Her reign was about balancing power. Playing the right political games, and most importantly, generally caring about her kingdom's well-being. Meanwhile, on the Roman side, Julius Caesar got assassinated, throwing the whole region into chaos. Cleopatra, now a proud mother to Caesar's son, watched as Rome fell into civil war again. This time, she aligned herself with. Mark Antony, another powerful Roman leader, the two were strategic allies, but of course also romantically involved. Cleopatra was playing the long game, but even though their relationship became infamous for its extravagance, there was a lot more strategy involved than people give her credit for. Their relationship eventually led to the final showdown with Octavian. Caesar's adopted heir. Despite their best efforts, Cleopatra and Antony were defeated at the Battle of Actium. Antony, devastated, ended himself, and Cleopatra followed shortly after, refusing to be paraded through Rome as a conquered queen. And the details of her passing are murky, most likely poison. And not a snake bite, but either way, she chose her fate, and so ended Cleopatra's incredible life. History has twisted her story over the years, but beneath the layers of myth, she was a brilliant leader, a skilled politician, and someone who generally cared for her kingdom. Of course, she had relationships with powerful men. But it was only part of her story. In the end, she wasn't just a queen who ruled; she shaped the course of history.
Thank you for watching.